When I had graduated from engineering school in 1958, I went to work right away for Westinghouse Electric Company. And uh, I was offered a job at the Westinghouse Electric Aerospace Division. At that time in the 1950s, Soviet Russia and the United States had accumulated enough nuclear weapons to destroy all human life on Earth. And that was a fearsome thing. As I look down uh, on the Earth, you're so far out in space. I, uh, the successful launch and orbit of Sputnik in 1957 was seen as clear proof that Russia was the world leader in aerospace technology. Immediately, everyone was very worried about the possibility that Soviet Russia could put ICBMs or other kinds of satellites in orbit that could attack the United States. And we had nothing like that. A nuclear threat, however, was not the only problem troubling Americans. Many racial issues like segregation and white supremacy remained unresolved. Especially in the South, young people began to be involved in the civil rights movement through sit-ins and boycotts. But after these peaceful protests led to conflict and violence from police and counter-protesters, several white religious leaders voiced concerns. You deplore the demonstrations that are presently taking place in Birmingham, calling our activities unwise and untimely. And the space program suffered from similar criticism. Uh, every step of the way in the development of Apollo, there were people who were negative. Some argued that NASA's enormous budget should have been used for humanitarian projects. And there was, of course, the risk of sending humans into totally unknown territory. Dr. King's defense of the civil rights movement outlines the steps that must be taken to legitimize risky actions. Collection of the facts to determine whether injustices are alive, negotiation, self-purification, and direct action. Dr. King did not deny that direct action involved risk and sacrifice, but he believes that action could be justified if it was necessary and if risk was minimized through proper preparation. The majority of people in the United States believe that we were in a situation where we might not even be there if Russia ever decided to attack us with nuclear weapons. The nuclear threat needed to be removed, and negotiation with Russia was not a viable option. George Kennan, ambassador to the Soviet Union, recalled that Cold War-era Soviet diplomacy was defined by secretiveness, lack of frankness, and duplicity. So at that speech that he made in September 1962, President Kennedy said to the world, we choose to go to the moon in, in this decade. A moon landing would be a great victory in the arms race and would show that America was able to match or exceed Russian aerospace technology. More to the point, it would show that American missiles were ready to respond to a Soviet attack. There are plenty of good arguments for why an arms race or mutually assured destruction is not the path to peace. At the time, however, it was seen as the most effective response to a very real nuclear threat. Uh, it was a great fear. Once action is seen to be just and negotiation has failed, it is necessary to carefully prepare in order to eliminate as much risk as possible. Dr. King recalls, we did not move irresponsibly into direct action. Every kind of an engineering project has a lot of risks when it hasn't ever been tested. And that's what engineers do. We test it. Apollo 8 is often seen as an especially risky mission for two reasons. It was breaking ground by being the first manned mission to leave Earth's orbit, and, relatively close to the launch date, NASA decided not to send the lunar lander on the mission because it would not be ready in time. It was supposed to have the lunar module attached to test it throughout the travel to the moon and into an orbit. But the lunar module was still in development, and it was critical to launch Apollo 8 in 1968 in order to keep the whole program on schedule. On the other hand, Apollo 8 was one in a series of launches, each with its own unique complexities. I don't think I ever felt, and I never had any information, that Apollo 8 was any riskier than any other uh, Apollo mission. Dr. King recalls, I have never yet engaged in a direct action movement that was well-timed according to the timetable of those who have not suffered unduly from the disease of segregation. When gauging the risk of an action, context must be remembered. The mission of Apollo 8 was not only to bring astronauts home safely, but also to stick to a schedule as part of America's effort to defend democracy around the world. We were all afraid, every one of us in this country, uh, we could see that Russia was 
gobbling up little countries around the, the world. And, and they knew there were a lot of risks, uh, <clears throat> but uh, in every project there were risks. Oppressed people cannot remain oppressed forever. The urge for freedom will eventually come. At a certain point, the testing and preparation are enough, and a person must act. The rocket must be launched and the protesters must march. At a certain point, caution becomes an excess and more preparation would actually endanger the mission. Dr. King urged prudent action with a clear goal in mind when all other alternatives had been exhausted. He was aware of the abuses his race had suffered, and he saw no reason to wait any longer to demand justice. The astronauts and engineers of Apollo 8 similarly understood their role as part of a greater struggle for freedom. They eliminated as many risks as possible, and then accepted whatever risk remained as worthwhile in the context of the broader mission. The three astronauts on Apollo, they were uh, selected as the men of the year by Time magazine. And although the specific mission with its particular risks is important to remember, far more important are the accomplishments of the American space program as a whole. Uh, we haven't had an atomic war, and it's been, what, 75 years. In this way, Apollo 8 demonstrates Dr. King's theory. Dangerous actions are appropriate when they are carried out prudently in support of a just cause.